Hello everyone, welcome back to Arts and Psychology. I hope you're enjoying this amazing day. Today we are joined by Gabriela Hernandez, a Puerto Rican singer, actress, and composer, or better known as the Puerto Rican Cinderella. excited to be here and talking about this so yeah I'm glad I'm glad so I want to ask you what have you been doing this quarantine well I've been doing a lot of things um the first uh two or three weeks was like um what I'm going to do right now but um I've done a lot of things um I've right I've wrote um my single I've been working That's on my great. single yes I've been working on my single I've been writing plays um I love writing stories and everything so I've been writing like a, a short play that I'm doing um I've been doing puzzles yeah that's like a hobby <laughs> that I've done that's yes great. I love yes I love it and I've been doing puzzles uh I tried painting but It wasn't great, so <laughs> I stopped doing it. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm doing some cardio in the morning with my grandma and my uncle. Um, I love nature, th uh, nature things, so I've been doing masks for my hair and my face. That's like great. dedicating, a, yes, dedicating like um, a lot of time to me, to myself, uh, time that I didn't have in the year. So yeah, yeah, it's been great actually. That's amazing. Okay, so I know that you're a singer, you're an actress, you also compose. I wanted to ask you, what is, what do you consider to be your forte? Well, actually, my forte is singing. I've been singing since I was 14 years old. Well, actually, 12 years, years old. I started in a, in a singing competition in TV. And it, was, it, it has been my forte because uh, even though when I started I wasn't taking lessons of music. Um, then I started uh, taking classes um, with great teachers and everything. So it's like um, the thing that I've most been um, doing in my life. And yeah, I think I'm the most prepared uh, that I am is in singing, so yeah. What motivated you to start a career as a singer? Well, actually, since I was a little kid, I've loved music. Um, my parents, uh, they love music. My family love music and the, and the parties and everything. So a fun thing is that when I was a kid, um, in the family activities, all the kids were playing uh, seek and hide and, and mom and dad. And I was in the middle of the party dancing and singing with my family. I was the only kid in the middle of the party uh, singing and dancing. So um, yeah, I think I have always have this in, in me, always have this music. So um, when I was a little kid, I don't remember the exact age, but my uh, godfather, he gave me um, a karaoke. Uh, it has like, it had like a lot of, um, of music, but the only one that I knew was La Bamba. <laughs> it was the only song that I knew and um, the only song that I singed in the karaoke. Uh, I felt like I was uh, an artist. <laughs> so, yeah, it was amazing. I had a cousin also that she loved to sing. And we were in the uh, outside of the house singing and everything and waking all the neighbors. So, yeah, it was amazing. Uh, I think I, I, I have always had this uh, in my veins and it's because of my family. So how long you've been in the artistic world? Since you were 14? Since I was actually 12 years old. It was when I started. Um, at 11 years old, I went to audition for a competition called Idol Kids Puerto Rico, um, but I didn't got in. So next year I did audition again. And that time I did got in and I was uh, at the finals. Um, and it was amazing. Like it opened me a lot of opportunities. Um, I, I, um, I met a lot of, of, of people. Um, I did, uh, and it was amazing. I made a lot of friends that I still have, uh, from the music and, and from that experience. And it was amazing. So yeah, 
I think that that's when I started. What emotional battles that you went through in that experience? Because I know that TV is very different from theater and it's very different from repertories and all of that. That you had any emotional battles throughout that experience? Because I know also they have um, this area where they make comments and people like comment about your appearance and they comment about your talent and all of this. Did you had any problems with like emotional problems throughout that? Actually, my parents did protect me a lot of that because I was a kid. I was um, 12 and 13 years old. And when I did start this competition, I got far and people started commenting um, fans from the other kids or fans that did not like me um, they started commenting in the in the social media and started saying a lot of mean things but I didn't have the chance to read them because my parents were like protecting me from from it um, my social media they had it um, my family were working on my social media I didn't have like a, like that in my hands. So I did not read all the comments, but uh, when I grew up, they told me, like, uh, you were bullied a lot, um, you were said uh, a lot of mean things, but we didn't uh, let you, like, read it because it was going to affect you. It was going to affect you in, your, in, your, in, your, in the program and in your performance. But it was, um, like, people were really mean, even though I was a child, even, even though my friends were childs, um, it was really mean. But, uh, yeah, my parents did protect me a lot, so I'm very grateful about that. But I'm sure there are kids uh, today that uh, parents do not do that. So they are being constantly affected by that. And it's really sad uh, that parents do not take this, uh, this concern in their hands. But, um, but yeah, uh, I think that that's something that people should, uh, you know, uh, think about it and protect their kids what about personal problems with mental health? Do you had any problems with your self image? Do you had obviously like everybody um, overthinking about, is this right for me? Am I in the right place? Did you ever battle with those things? Well, actually, um, when I was a, a kid, I was really confident with myself. I remember being like that. I was, uh, I didn't like uh, cared what people think or cared like, uh, um, what do I look like? Um, uh, I just cared like enjoying myself and having fun. That's but good. when you do uh, grow up and when you do like uh, start in the, um, you know, uh, being like the 14 and 15 years, it's, it's more hard because you start thinking about yourself because you start thinking about what other people think about you. Uh, and I did had a lot of insecurities when I was, when I grew, when I grew up, when I was, uh, more, more older and, um, it was hard, like, uh, having to, to work with, uh, people comments and, and, you know, a, a lot of people are telling me what I should do and what I shouldn't do. And no one was listening of what I wanted to do. So it was really hard. Um, uh, yeah, I did struggle a lot uh, after uh, my 16 and, and 17 years. Um, I did struggle a lot like with anxiety um, because I was under a lot of pressure at school, um, at home, at extra activities. I was under a lot of pressure, a lot of stress that I wasn't uh, prepared for that. So I remember... Uh, I was having, I, I, I could have like a, a great day, a, a great, um, um, you know, a great uh, thing that was going on in my life. And when I came home uh, and, and I, I take a shower and I go to my bed, I was like crying just out of nowhere, crying because I couldn't with the pressure, with the stress, with the anxiety. And um, I remember I had like a lot of acne problem, problem, um, hormone problems and like my body started to to you know get out of control because of that anxiety disorders and and that stress and it was hard like to get through it because uh I felt like I couldn't tell no one because people uh were going to to see me like oh that's just some silly thing uh that you're going through uh you can get out of that you can control that but it's not it's actually it's mm -hmm. it's it's really big uh and and you know it's 
I think that people right now can understand me more. Um, you know, uh, people our age can understand what we're going through because uh, we are this and, and we are very vulnerable. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard um, to get through this. But I did. I did uh, get through it. I, I started like, um, you know, taking care of myself, uh, 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 concentrating in me and what I needed. Um, I started doing meditation, uh, breathe exercises, stretching. I don't know what stretch, uh, why stretching is so <laughs> relaxing for me. Uh, I did. And it was like, take a moment for me in the day. I, I, even though I was so stressed and under a lot of pressure, I took a moment. I, I like, I make sure that I did take a moment in my life and just breathe and just say, Gabriela, you got this, you got this and you can do it and just be yourself and stay true to who you are. And doesn't matter what people say, you, you can do it. So yeah, I think that's, that's something that, that helped me a lot to get through this. Would you say that you have that under control now? And how do you have it under control? Well, after I think two years with struggling with this, uh, with anxiety and uh, uh, pressure and stress, I think right now I have it under control um, because I started thinking that this can consume me. This uh, cannot like uh, define my life. This cannot, uh, you know, affect me. So I have to take control over. I have to 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 beat it. So yeah, I did. I uh, I do a lot of uh, like, like I told you. I do I do a lot of um, breathe exercise exercises, and just uh, close my eyes and just. Remember all those those good things that I love uh, from doing uh, with arts and, and good memories that I have uh, outside uh, um, with friends, with people. Mm -hmm. And just uh, that makes me happy. Uh, those moments that those make me happy and make me smile. And usually what I what I do and what helps me a lot is that I am a, I am a Christian. So I tend to pray and close my eyes and, and pray and, and it helps me a lot uh, to relax to you know have uh, have like that connection with God and, and and yeah like I feel like I'm protected and and I can do it. I can get through it and and yeah I think I, I have managed myself to to get over it. <laughs> That's great. And thank you for sharing that part of you. Um, I wanted to ask you also uh, what has been the biggest battle you have to face throughout the industry with the industry of arts? Well, actually, um, that's a trick question. But the biggest battle that I had to to you know to um, to get through uh, in my in my art, well, in my art career, is that. I cannot listen to all what people say, even though it, it, you know, it seems harsh, but you can't listen to what other people says, like to everything. Because um, when I started like uh, telling people that I wanted to study musical theater, um, they just uh, look at me like, is that a real profession? Or are you really going to get your life with it? Um, how are you going to manage to pay your bills? How, how are you going to live? And you can actually live, um, you can uh, have, be a professional in, in musical theater. That's, uh, that's nothing bad. Um, just like a lot of people um, do not know about this career, uh, do not know about, about this, um, this big uh, professional industry. So they just tend to tell you a lot of things. Oh no, study this, it's better. Um, study, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, do not study ours. You're gonna be hungry and starve all your life. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's not it. I, I mean, you study it, what makes made you happy. I want to study what makes me happy. And I've always told my family, it doesn't matter that I am, you know, that I, I, I starve, that I'm hungry, that I live in a very humble house. I am happy. I am happy doing what I love. I am happy um, doing art. I am happy doing um, musical theater. So it's what makes me uh, who I am. Um, so yeah, that's actually 
the big struggle uh, that I had to do, like battle with what people says, because sometimes I did listen to them. And, and it was those times that I questioned myself, do I really want this? Do I really should do this? Do I really um, want, want to be a professional in this? So yeah, it's actually ignoring all those uh, comments that do not, um, you know, have something positive in your life. So yeah, it was, it was hard, but um, I think I've managed myself and I just, I, um, I made a decision and I'm going to study that and that's what I want. That's, uh, that's what I am going to do. So yeah. That's great. You said that there's not many people that know that musical theater is a career. How would you show people or educate people about, hey, this is an actual career. You can actually pursue this. How would you tell people or show people that this is something that we can actually study, something that we can actually make a living out of? Actually, the most perfect example here in Puerto Rico is the shows. The musical theater shows that, that we have here in Puerto Rico are so amazing, are so beautiful. It doesn't matter if it's a little production or a big production, all of them are beautiful because people are so talented that when you see these shows, you are like very, you know, um, very happy and you enjoy it a, a lot. People enjoy it um, because you have three different disciplines. You have dance, you have acting, and you have music. So you are not only being a professional in one of them, but you're being a professional in the three of them. So you are being um, very educated and in those three disciplines. So when you see these shows, people are like, oh my God, that was amazing. Oh my God, that was beautiful. So, you know, this is actually a profession. This is actually uh, uh, something that we can study. Uh, it, it's not only acting, it's not only music, it's not only dance, but the three of them combine. So um, it's, it's, I think that the best way to educate people is to, mm -hmm. that they, today, for going to the shows and see for themselves the, the very professional thing that we are doing on the stage. And, you know, it's not something, it's, it's, not, only, it's not only something to entertain you, but it's something that pays our salaries and pays our lives mm -hmm. and that we love and that we, uh, that we do for, for living. So, yeah, I think the best way for people to educate themselves and is uh, to see shows. And it's something that we are taught since we are in high school, since we are in school, um, teachers like tend uh, to take us to see shows, to see to the, mm -hmm. to the theater, to see, um, uh, you know, plays. So yeah, it's, it's something to educate our, ourselves and to see that they are professionals and they, uh, you know, they, they, they have to live, uh, they have to live um, for that. So yeah, that's, that's something that, that people should do. How would you say that arts helped you in a personal level? Well, art has helped me in a personal level, like all my life. Um, art has been all my life. I, I love doing art. It's like something that, that I have inside of me. But in the most personal ways, um, when I felt sad, I usually tend to um, write songs uh, when I feel like something... Uh, Uh, I'm struggling with something like personal with a friend, um, you know, with the family issues. I, I don't know. I just, I tend to write songs and it's just helped me to put all my thoughts in, in music, in a melody. And it's something that it's, it's really um, refreshing for myself. It's like uh, an update to myself. Like, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's really awesome. Also I do, um, just uh, take my guitar and just start to playing chords and, and, and everything. And I just started to um, improvising, improvising with my voice and it helps me a lot. It's like relaxing. Um, yeah. And another thing that I do, um, it's when I, I'm like, uh, I don't know, like with, under a lot of pressure, I just fit some music, uh, some playlists and I start singing and dancing like a crazy woman. <laughs> and, and it's just, it, it's just uh, me alone in my in my um, 
you know, in my bedroom with my music and, and just being, being myself, to, you know, um, no one can, can just, I, I think that I feel like no one can touch me when I'm with my art and, and it's just a, a sick, sacred place that I have, um, uh, you know, hearing my music and writing and, and writing my plays and just putting my thoughts in, 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 in my book. So yeah, I think that's, uh, that's how, that's how I do. You said that you are writing short plays. Are you trying to put them out when the quarantine is over or you're still, you know, in the making? Well, actually, um, I started making some songs and, and some lyrics and everything. So I don't think it's going, it's going to be, uh, you know, done when this quarantine is over. But I do want to, to you know, to keep, um, you know, uh, improving it. Uh, I want to maybe get some help from friends, musician friends and producers and everything that they can help me with the, with the story, with the lyrics, with the music. So in some day, I don't know, in some future, <laughs> I could, you know, release it and be a, a playwright. Okay. Yeah, that's something I love. Um, yeah, <laughs> something I love is creative writing. So I don't know, maybe I just do a, a minor in college. Um, so yeah, um, uh, it's amazing. Uh, uh, I love to doing it. So maybe someday, someday I release it. <laughs> okay, so do you have any plans for when the quarantine is over? Well, I don't know when this is going to be over, but I do. What I do know it's that I want to go to study to United States um, because, sadly, here in Puerto Rico, we do not have a bachelor in musical theater, and and yeah, it's it's like a, it's very sad that we don't have that here. But I want to study it. I want to be a professional in it, so I want to get a bachelor in musical theater. Exactly. So yeah, I wish that when all of this is over, over I can go outside and just uh, make my bachelor and make my degree and just enjoy that life of college enjoy that um, you know that um, life of being an artist so yeah let's just say that that's my plans after quarantine it's done what would be your advice for rising artists well actually my advice for rising um, artist it's uh, something I had to tell myself since I was a, a little kid. Um, and it says, um, when all the people doesn't believe in you, you are the only one that can. But when you do not believe in yourself, then you are lost. So you are the only one that can live in yourself. You are the only one that, you know, that can believe that you can do it, that you can, uh, you can dream very big. You, you have to dream. Um, that's something that keep us artists alive, that, that keep us, um, you know, um, wanting to, to wanting to, to, you know, to do something more with our lives. So I think that we have to dream. We have to and dream big. You do not uh, just dream small. Just uh, no, dream big. Want to reach the stars. Uh, to you know, to to get out of the earth, <laughs> like I say, because. <laughs> that's what keep us alive that that's what uh, you know moves our 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 lives um to do something uh you know extraordinary and do something out of the box because we are artists we have to think out of the box and we have to think out of uh you know out of the the normal and with those for those rising actors um or, or people um that you know that loves arts and and want to pursue a career in this Mm -hmm. it's not easy and, and it's a reality that it's not true. easy being an artist here and in every part of the world it's not easy but it's very satisfactory when you do this show in front of people I think that people is what uh, and public is what uh, moves all of our, our lives when you do this and you get out and people start telling you oh my god that was amazing congratulations you did a great job um you and your friends were were awesome and that made made me cry oh my god that made me laugh uh, oh my god it was so hilarious that's when you know that you're doing a great job and okay. even though when people tells you bad things when people uh tells you like uh like uh very rough things it motivates you to be better mm -hmm. every day. It motivates you to, you know, with your art, tell them you are wrong. So just believe in yourself, enjoy what you're doing. Don't let people tell you what you should and you shouldn't do. Just 
trust your heart and trust your thoughts and trust what you want. And yeah, just be an artist and enjoy being it because it's amazing being an artist. It's amazing making people laugh and, 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 and being sad and, and enjoy themselves and have, or um, when people go to the theater to see shows and to see um, plays, they are going to the theater trying to escape from their normal lives, mm-hmm. trying to escape and to have a, a little bit of time with their family or for their um, for themselves. So it's amazing that you are giving them this uh, pretty time, this this uh, time of you know of uh, amazing things that you are doing with your with your art. So yeah, just enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself always and and just dream and dream big because because you can reach the stars if you believe in it. So yeah, just dream and and you will do it. Well, Gabriela, I wanted to thank you very much for saying yes to this project, for yes, absolutely. supporting it, for being here, for talking with us. And I just hope that you have an amazing career as an artist. Thank you. Because you already started and I hope that you finish <laughs> it and that I see you somewhere very, very big. Um, thank I you. just wanted to thank you for being here and saying yes to this. So thank you very much. Yes, absolutely. Thanks to you. Yeah.